well, so I hope there's no Cookie Monster involved. <laughs> Hi, I was just uh, curious, it looks like, at least in the video you showed, there was no uh, oven mitt. So how are, you know, how are the astronauts <laughs> going to handle what potentially might be hot stuff coming out of those ovens? Sure, they do actually have an oven on station, but it does kind of interfere with how we can see the actual insertion. So for the video for the demonstration, we did not have them use the glove because it kind of blocks a lot of the view of the sample tray. Um, but there is a glove that's already flying with the oven so that when the crew actually goes to remove that, they will actually use a, a glove for that. Um, and then if you look actually at the video, they actually have a place next to the oven to actually place the tray once they remove it so they can actually cool it. Um, and one of the things that I failed to mention that I think is fairly relevant to the conversation we're having right now is that there are um, some small filters there in that silicon. You can kind of see it there in the, in the imagery that he's taking there now. And that will actually, we believe, allow the opportunity for the crew to actually get, hopefully, a smell of the first baked cookie in space. <laughs> okay, uh, one more question here. Hi, uh, ChelseaGoodSpace.com. Um, so a, a couple of months ago, when people were first getting really excited about this about to launch, um, I heard some discussion around the shape of the cookie um, and how you know all of those chemical reactions that go into baking will like actually be affected by the microgravity. And it was said that it might be puffed up or even end up looking spherical. Um, so I'm, I'm curious if you have any more ideas or a better grasp on what it might look like, or if we just have to wait and see? I think, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait and see. But it has been uh, quite the topic, especially amongst the team, about what are we actually going to see when this happens. Because we really don't know, right? I mean, when you bake here on the ground, you put the cookie on the tray, it puffs up on the top of the tray, and the bottom is flat, and the top is a little bit curved based on you know the ratio of your ingredients. Um, but obviously, nobody's done this in space, so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. So it could come out more like a, you know, a cylinder. It could puff up kind of in a general you know, cylinder type shape. Um, it could actually create a sphere. We really don't know, and I think that's one of the more exciting things that we'll find out when we actually do the experiment. New meaning to cookie balls. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Quite possibly. <laughs> question in the back of the room. Uh, yeah, I was just curious. You said there was an oven on board already. And I was curious as to what, uh, are they using a conventional microwave or is there a conventional oven up there? Oh, so I'm sorry if I caused any confusion with that. There is ac actually no oven currently in space. Um, this oven that we're launching is the very, very first that's actually going to go and be in space. Um, when the crew actually prepares food, and there's a lot of information, and Liz probably is your best person to give you a lot of detail on that, um, but they're looking at essentially heating up what they have. So they have essentially what's called a food warmer, which enables them to basically put the packets of food in there to warm it up. Or they're doing things like adding hot water to, to, a, to a bag to actually cause the reaction and get it to be the, the temperature that they want to eat it. Hopefully that's right. <laughs> uh, I think there was one other question over here. Thank you. I, I'm going to ask the question everybody's wondering. Um, with NanoRacks developing this system, is there a matching development uh, program for microgravity milk dispensing and dunking systems? <laughs> Uh, you know, sadly, I think that's a missed opportunity. But um, you know, we do have some future future looking uh, next missions, so it's definitely possible that that could be something we could look at in the future. And uh, the astronaut Don Pettit did develop a glass of sorts uh, oh, for yeah. use on the space station. So uh, that at least exists as a possibility for a container in, into which to dunk your cookie. So there could be a great future collaboration there then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another question in the back. After the experiments have been performed by the astronauts that are required, will the oven be available for their own personal experimentations? Well, I don't think they're going to have an opportunity to just kind of do their own experiments, but it is something that we are planning to use for future investigations as well. Um, so, of course, if crew members have an idea, they could certainly bring that to us, and we can certainly look at, at, at implementing that as well. They just don't have raw ingredients. That too. Uh, a couple more in the back. <laughs> hey, uh, was it always cookies? And if not, what was else was being considered? 
So the, when the opportunity first came to us, it was mostly a question of, can we actually do this kind of idea of cooking in space? What could we actually do? Was an oven possible? Um, and that's really how the opportunity started. Um, and so when we first started looking at it, we actually had something that looked vastly different from what you've seen today. It was a very tiny experiment, and it was basically, if we put some heating elements in this box and we use this type of power, what could we actually do? get out of that. Um, and then from there it kind of graduated to be a more, you know, more what you see once we kind of understood some of the properties that had to be addressed in order to take that idea of cooking on the ground and make it work in that microgravity environment of the ISS. And then through that process, uh, around the time that we actually had the, the SpaceX launch uh, with Starman, uh, there was a, quite an interesting engagement on Twitter. Um, and the Zero-G Kitchen team actually engaged with, with Doubletree and actually got them excited about the idea of the fact that they could be the first thing that's baked in space. And it just kind of has gone from there. It's actually been a, a pretty wonderful collaboration. Uh, because of all the different expertises that these, that these folks and these teams bring together, it's been a really great synergy between all of us in terms of the, the opportunities that it's brought to the different teams to engage and to, to be successful in this project. Uh, we have another question here. Hi, uh, it's a two-part question. Um, one is how long has the project been in development? And the second, uh, I mentor a women's STEM program. Uh, how many women are on your team working on this project? Those are great questions. Um, so the first question, um, I think we're probably just past the year mark. Um, I think uh, might be like a little bit longer than that. It's kind of hard to keep track, especially in this industry, things go by so fast. <laughs> Um, and for your second question, we actually have quite a good group of women that work in the team. Um, I actually have uh, on my team individually uh, another gal that works with me directly uh, in mission management. Uh, we also have Abby who runs our marketing and communications uh, department. And we also have quite a bunch of folks down in our Houston team, especially the team that engaged with the safety process of approving the, the oven, which is no small feat. Um, as you all know, safety is very important to station and for the longevity of the crew. So uh, I would say a, a good portion of the team has actually been female and actually the project manager for the Zero-G Oven project uh, is also a female. Um, so I'm very happy to say that it's been quite a good mix of folks. <laughs> uh, great, thank you. I think that's all the time we have for questions at this time. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, as we've heard today, so the much. space station is an important laboratory uh, because everything behaves differently in space, even cookies. Uh, we are, can increase our knowledge of engineering, of sciences, physical sciences, biology, human physiology, our planet Earth, and the universe itself, right? Several additional uh, science investigations were featured earlier this month on October 17th in a teleconference that we held. If you didn't get the chance to dial in for that uh, teleconference, you can still listen to a replay of it and hear about some additional exciting investigations that are headed to space. Uh, the replay of that teleconference is uh, ac accessible by dialing 1-800-756-6241. Again, that number is 800-756-6241, and the replay will be available until November 16th. Uh, thank you for joining us to hear about this science that's headed up on Cygnus tomorrow. The launch is scheduled for 9.59 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow morning, Saturday. And uh, you can tune in today at 2.30 p.m. to hear about the space station status, the status of the rocket, and the spacecraft itself, and of course, a launch weather forecast. And then the uh, broadcast of the launch itself will start at 9.30 a.m. on Saturday. Thanks so much. Uh, you can continue to follow along with all of the cool science and research on space station by following on Twitter at ISS underscore research and at nasa.gov slash ISS-science is what that should actually say. Uh, ISS-science. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you again at 2.30. All right, so I'm just going to mute that for now. Uh, we are going to, looks like I have other things popping up. So we are waiting for, pardon me while I find what I'm looking for. Um, 
We are waiting for the other part of the NASA stream because the release of Jax's uh, cargo vehicle is scheduled for today at 1 p.m. So we have some time before that. Uh, the cookie thing was on and I thought it was interesting and I was ready to stream so I just hit streaming. Uh, the launch tomorrow is happening from the East Coast. <laughs> Um, let me actually look that up. That's a very good question that I should probably know the answer to. All I remember is that it's East Coast. It's happening from Virginia. So I think that's Wallops. It's happening for from Virginia. So that's where the, the uh, launch is tomorrow. And it's pretty early. It'll be pretty early for me. I'm going to try to bring it to you. I make no promises, um, because that's going to be early and I'm going to have to like get up and move and I am not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. Um, yeah, so hello everybody. Uh, Daily Space is going to, uh, Daily Space is going to follow the release of this, so I'm not too sure how delayed Daily Space is going to be. Dr. Pamela will be giving you Daily Space, so we'll literally drop the broadcast on my end and then she'll pick it up on her end. Um, so yeah, let me just kind of scroll up. <sighs> um, Cause I, I know there were questions. Um, Falco online says late party yesterday, Annie. Um, I think Favorite Human and I went to bed at a semi-decent hour. We were in bed by 2 a.m. Does that count? Um, we really didn't do any Halloween-y stuff yesterday. The weather was miserable. I was at my grandfather's, as I do on Thursdays, and the power went out at my grandfather's house. So my grandfather, my uncle, and I sat around the table uh, under light of the flashlight and kind of watched the uh, fire department cut part of a tree off. And I thought or a tree had fallen over the road. Um, so power went out, tree was over the road. We, the fire department got their chainsaws out and were cutting down, doing chainsawy things with the tree. And I thought that they had completely cleared the tree off the road. I still wasn't going to go that way. I was going to go the other way out, but I couldn't even do that because the fire truck and another car blocked the road. Um, so I had to go the way out that I didn't want to go out because I really wanted to go home. And um, it, they didn't clear the entire tree from the streets. It was like, this is the street, right? This is the tree. So the base of the tree was still on the street and it was still leaning up against something. So I had to drive around that and then I get to the end of the road and it's a T, meaning that it's, you know, mm -mm, there's not a good way. Anyway, it's a T intersection. And I see the back side of the road close sign and I was like, why do they have that on the other side of the T? Everybody knows this is a, a T intersection. It wasn't on the other side of, of the road. It was on the part of the road that I was on. So I had to drive around that. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Bits. I hear bits. Puck's like, up. Oh, I heard the Cheerios. Hey! make it rain! Falco asks, were they even real firemen or just kids with chainsaws trick-or-treating? You don't trick-or-treat in my grandfather's neighborhood. It's... Oh, actually, no. Trick-or-treating for my grandfather's town was cancelled yesterday. So no, it wasn't trick-or-treaters. And um, he lives kind of far out. Like, he doesn't live in town. He lives in more of a rural area. So... Aww. Base Lemur says, how do you cancel Halloween? Um, you 
cancel Halloween by saying the weather is going to be bad and broadcasting it everywhere. They didn't cancel it. They rescheduled trick-or-treating and they rescheduled the Halloween parade for both Dr. Pamela and my grandfather's town. Which was good because Grandpa didn't want to leave the house yesterday. So anyways, we have a few minutes before all of this starts. So hello, welcome. Um, let me do a marker real quick. Um, I swore I did a marker. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, hello, welcome. Um, I'm your host, Annie Wilson. We're doing things a little bit different today because uh, the Japanese cargo vehicle is being released from the ISS literally soonish. Uh, I will actually flip to the other screen so you can see it. That was not your phone. That was not your phone. I repeat, that was not your phone. Because somebody's going to go, that was my phone. Um, so we're going to watch this. And then we're going to flip over to uh, Dr. Pamela, who has all of your daily space news. So it's a little different today. It's okay. Things happen. Um, part of me is like, I should run rockets, but then... That would be a little weird. Actually, yeah, let me run the rockets once just so Susie has a clear cut. And I'm going to be annoying and run ads while I do that. Uh, the ads help people that are joining after we've started to not get pre-roll. You're going to be watching the rockets anyways. You won't miss anything. I promise. So let me get that all together. And yeah, I will see you on the other side as soon as I find it. There it is. So hello and welcome again, everybody. Um, today's a little different. We are waiting for NASA to start their broadcast of the release of the Japanese cargo vessel. Um, and then once that's done, we'll flip over to Dr. Pamela, who has your daily space for today. So while we wait for that, um, if anybody has any questions, remember to use the star. Uh, use the star emoji. It's a circle with another star inside. And yeah, the robot music was a little loud again. Okay. I I will have to fix that again. I don't typically use the, the robot or the rocket music on this one. Um, yeah, yeah. So I hope everybody that celebrated Halloween has a good Halloween. I hope that everybody that celebrates... Um, all Souls Day and Day of the Dead has a great All Souls Day and Day of the Dead. And essentially, I hope you all are just having a good day. And yeah, things and stuff. So, more bits for the dogs. I know. There you go, Tinker. Um, Guido says, hmm, my notifications utterly failed me today. You, you, you're okay. Oh, things are happening. Look at that. Look at that. This is Mission Control Houston. Good morning. Good morning and good afternoon. You're getting a live look from the International Space Station. Looking down at the HTV, the H2 transfer vehicle, Kunatari 8. Loaded with trash and old uh, nickel hydrogen batteries, ready to depart the International Space Station. Right now, the space station and Kunotari in an orbital nighttime. The space station itself, 262 statue miles just south of Japan. In about 11 minutes, we should expect a sunrise starting a nine minute countdown until a 12.20 p.m. central time release of Kunotari this afternoon.
Teams looking after the HTV are here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Flight teams of Orbit 2 are looking after the re release of the HTV today, as well as flight controllers over in Scuba, Japan. Uh, that are looking All right, after I didn't HTV realize this itself, was really scheduled for 20 minutes after the hour instead of on the hour. So, Dr. Pamela, how fast do you think you can do the news? Because otherwise we just have to watch this. Not that there's anything wrong with watching this, but we also want to make sure you guys get your news. And I'm sure Dr. Pamela has plans for the day, and I don't want to totally ruin her plans for the day. That's actually a good question. Do you folks want to watch this, or do you want uh, the news? He and Kanalakos will be guiding the uh, two astronauts that are ready in the Cupola workstation to release uh, the HTV here in just about 20 minutes. All right, cool. So I'm Dr. going to a go, no go pull. resubscribe. Okay, so I'm going to make <laughs> sure all teams are ready for that release. Again, he's working with the flight control teams over in Scuba. Japan. I'm going to wait till I get HTV word and then I'm going to drop. Here the teams are looking uh, the, the broadcast itself. broadcast stream and then she'll pick it up on her side. There's a series of burns. So, uh, my apologies. I thought this was happening promptly at 1. International Space Station and outside. I should know better by now. So, uh, I will keep an eye on this while the news is going on. So, yes, thank you for the resub, Guido. To re-enter Earth's atmosphere and burn right. over the Pacific Ocean. Cool. Saturday night. I will see you all in a little bit. Bye. Now handing over that satellite communication. This is expected as we hand over from TDRS satellites. These are the tracking and data relays satellites that are geosynchronous orbit, uh, just about 23,000 miles away from the uh, space station, but provide the video and audio communication. This is a, a predicted handover. We should be regaining that communication shortly. In the meantime, we're tracking a release of HTV in uh, just a little more than a minute from now. Once it's released, it'll be about uh, 40 minutes until it's outside of the approach ellipsoid. Please be sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA during that time. We'll try to get as many as we can while the HTV starts flying away from the International Space Station towards that approach ellipsoid about a kilometer away. This is the International Space Station Flight Control Room teams here of the Orbit 2 team being led by Flight Director Royce Renfrew. Flight teams here so before we switched, with people were very nervous and pacing Japan. around. The only thing you guys missed Saturday was morning, the loading of uh, the old batteries into Japan the unpressurized cargo hour. bay using probably Canada Arm. And everything... <laughs> shh, quit being rude. And a lot of people look uh, a lot more calmer now. So yeah, you really didn't miss much. And now we're just impatiently waiting, again. Did I say Canadian arm? I meant to say Canada arm. Um, they, I don't know why they were nervous, they just looked nervous. There was some nervous pacing. There might have, I could potentially see something going wrong when they were, uh, loading the... Standing by for release. ...batteries into the unpressurized cargo bay, but now all they have to do is release. We are literally waiting for for it to be released. And my dogs are waiting for more Cheerios. 
No. So I'm going to attempt to take this moment and uh, and say thank you for the donations. I'm not sure if we're going to do bit sync or not. Um, all that other stuff. So Limp Rimble asks, are they sending it to the recycling depot? No. Veronica Cure asks, is it going to return or burn up? Uh, it's going to burn up, so I guess that's the recycling depot? I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the atoms will be free in the universe again, but not in a way that we can quickly... And we have a release. Them. Oh, there it goes. 12.21 p.m. Central Time. The International Space Station flying 261 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean just west off the coast, coast of California. I say just essentially Canada arm just lets go of it. A great separation. The arm about a meter away backing away. coast of California coming into view as the arm backs away after a successful 12.21 p.m. Central Time release. Oh, I like that view. Um, I don't know if it still has fuel left. Uh, on two for HTV. HTV retreat commanded and PDT timer started. Copy. You heard that com that uh, confirmation from Jessica v Jessica Mir. The uh, retreat command sent the arm about four meters away. Now five meters away. For Americans, just think of a meter as a yard. It's not exact, but it's close enough. Because that distance doesn't look like a whole lot, but it, it really is. I know, Tinker. Beast Lemur asks, all those solar panels, metal, potentially reusable things, seems like such a wa big waste to only have it burn up. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. It's what has been done before, before the Dragon cargo capsule. You see from the workstation, uh, a little more than 14 meters away, HTV flying free. Before uh, SpaceX and the Dragon... Still holding steady, ready for that command uh, where that first burn will take it away from the International Space Station. Aha! There's your answer, Falco. It does have its own thruster. Tinkerbell. Um, before SpaceX's cargo, Dragon cargo, none of these returned back to Earth intact. Um, they were just used as... You know, safe-ish methods to dispose of waste. Station Houston for HTV. Safety net enabled. Happy safety net. And reusability is still um, a garbage scow. <laughs> Reusability is, you know, one of SpaceX's things, and I guess it does bring down costs, but before that, everybody was just looking at all of this stuff as it's a one-way trip, so. The European ATV was able to come back, wasn't it? Uh, ask Guido. I really... Again, a great release of HTV, 12.21 p.m. Central Time. I really don't know. HTV in a retreat mode, uh, drifting slowly away, almost 17 meters at this point. The arm itself six meters away from the spacecraft. 
and I don't know what Again, the there's a series is. of burns to get it out of that keep out sphere, counting down for those milestones. I don't know what the safety net is either. Um, I know it was released over the coast of California, but other than that, I'm relying on what they tell me. So I'm going to use the power of the internet and look at... Is California pink nowadays? I think it's just the filter they're using. Yes, the European ATV automated transfer vehicle um, was reusable. HTV about uh, eight meters away from the station, counting down for that first burn. The thrusters are activated on HTV as a space station and Kunotari 8 fly 258 statute miles over Mexico. Station Houston for HTV, IDM-1 maneuver loaded, monitor per step two in 1.602. Copy, we're monitoring step two. That uh, IDM-1 referenced by Capcom, Alex Kanalakos, is the uh, two-second burn now starting. And IDM-1 complete. That's the first of two burns to get it out of the uh, keep-out sphere. HTV about 20 meters away from the space station. Okay, so the ATV, Europeans ATV, uh, did the reusable thing. I don't know if they actually reused any of the craft. The separation burns uh, to again get out of the keep out sphere are separated by about 10 minutes. That first one complete, a two second burn. The next one a little bit longer at about 12 seconds. Station Houston for HTV, IDM-1 maneuver complete. Verify per step three in 1.602. Copy, we have verified all in step three. Copy. Oh no, wait, it, it's not reusable. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure out what exactly the thing is. Um, Oh, okay, thank you, Larry, for, for finding that. Larry says, once its mission was accomplished, the ATV, which would be filled up with 6.5 tons of waste, would separate from the ISS. Its thrusters would deliver... Again, that first uh, departure burn complete, uh, two-second burn. The next one coming up in uh, less than 10 minutes from now, and that'll get it outside the keep-out sphere. HTV, 24 meters away from the space station and continuing to move away. In the meantime, uh, send in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll try to answer as many as we can as we wait uh, this 40-minute uh, procedure to get firm release outside of the approach ellipsoid. This first one comes from Renee. He's asking, uh, HTV is departing with trash to burn up, but not all the batteries have been replaced. What's the status on the battery replacement spacewalks? Are they postponed? So the pallet that's inside HTV is actually the pallet from HTV-7. That pallet is full of uh, nickel hydrogen batteries. They're old batteries, uh, ready to dispose, and they'll deorbit with HTV. Uh, that's scheduled for late Saturday night, uh, U.S. time. The pallet that HTV brought up is still on the International Space Station. Three of the lithium-ion batteries, three of the six lithium-ion batteries that the pallet brought up are installed successfully onto the 2B power channel. The next one to tackle is the 4B power channel. Now, all those three are up and running thanks to the work done on the last spacewalk by Christina Cook and Jessica Meir, the first all-female spacewalk in history.
to make sure that that power channel is at fully operational. One of the battery charge discharge units uh, that are downstream of the lithium ion battery that supplies power to the many experiments aboard the space station failed, so they had to swap that out. There were a few more spacewalks originally planned to complete the 4B channel, but those uh, will be scheduled for next year as we await uh, the upcoming spacewalks to uh, repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. For those of you who have tuned into NASA TV, you may have heard some of the uh, briefings so far of the many experiments on the Northrop Grumman's Cygnus vehicle launching tomorrow. That includes some uh, tools that the astronauts will use uh, during those spacewalks later this year to repair the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. Uh, you can tune in to coverage tomorrow morning. Our coverage will begin at 8.30 a.m. Central Time, 9.30 Eastern, for an 8.59 a.m. Central launch, 9.59 a.m. Eastern. Cygnus will be carrying about 8,200 pounds of cargo to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, we're still tracking the HTV-8, Kunotari-8, making its way away from the International Space Station after a good uh, initial burn to get out of that uh, keep-out sphere. Again, there's one more to get out of the keep-out sphere. The uh, HTV is about a little less than 34 meters away from the space station. Keep sending in your questions using the hashtag AskNASA. So Guido's asking, I could swear there was one predecessor to the Dragon that could bring cargo back, but which one? I'm looking at that right now, and I think it was Soviet, and I don't think it was actually ever launched. It's called the TKS spacecraft. Again, um, Kunotari 8 was released at 12.21 p.m. Central Time from the Canada Arm 2. NASA astronauts Christina Cook and Jessica Meir at the controls of HTV now monitoring its uh, departure from the International Space Station. They have a workstation where they're looking at telemetry. Okay, I was just trying to make sure there was no new information. Tracking that um, it is about 40 meters away from the space station now. The TKS looks like it the, uh, could, like it looks like it had a um, return capsule because right it now, could be optionally crewed. One meter per second. Uh, it, but as far as a predecessor to that, to, to the Dragon Cargo, I really, that's the only thing I see. Um, that's the only thing I see. I don't think the progress was ever designed to... Oh, the TKS was tested? Oh, like, it's hard because I have a whole, like, mass of text and I'm trying to... Um, I'm trying to read and chat and all this other things. But, um... Yeah, there were there were some okay, there were some test flights and they did go off. So I think it was the TKS. Ooh, operational TKS spacecraft would have developed film return capsules to uh, Almaz stations. Which, you know, one of the really early um, really early Soviet space stations. really early. And yeah, there is indeed part of a capsule that comes back, so I think that is the one you're thinking of, Guido? We're tracking that the did return? Of eight right now, uh, approaching 50 meters away from the International Space Station. Um, In just a few minutes, it'll initiate that second departure burn. That's a 12-second burn. You'll start seeing the HTV move I just a bit faster away from the space station. Don't now, uh, think now departing at a glacial the progress speed of, uh, returns anything. Rachel says, I'm scanning the feed to see, Again, trying to see myself waving soon. up at the ISS. I mean, you're welcome to try. You're welcome to try. Um...
Dream Chaser cargo system. I don't think that ever... Oh, it's still in development. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll look at E. Station Houston for HTV. IDM two maneuver loaded. Monitor for step four in one decimal six zero two. Monitoring step four and have verified both parameters. Copy. Capcom, Alex Kanalakos in the International Space Station Flight Control Room, talking with the two NASA astronauts uh, currently monitoring HTV's departure in the Cupola workstation. That's uh, Christina Cook and Jessica Meir. Now it's confirmation that that um, departure burn, the second departure burn, is coming up very soon. HTV uh, spacecraft ready for that command. That'll be about a 12 second burn. And that'll get the HTV moving a little bit faster and outside that keepout sphere. Now, JAXA was considering a return capsule option, but um, I don't really see anything much of, you know, the progress on that. Of course, I'm looking on Wikipedia, which I do not use as a primary source, but is a good place to get started definitely a good place to get started so um yeah but everything i'm seeing for cargo almost 70 meters away from the space station now kunatari 8 uh hugging the western coast of peru on its southeasterly flight it'll follow the track down the andes mountains as we await completion of that uh, second departure burn. Um, as far as I can find for cargo, it was the TKS that actually brought stuff back and um, the Crew Dragon. <laughs> does Cygnus does not return. It is a flying garbage can. Um, the launch is tomorrow. It's kind of early. I do not promise to, I hesitate to promise that I'll be streaming it, but my intention is to stream that, that launch. It's just really early, so, and make it rain. And by really early, um, I mean that they're gonna start broadcasting at, I think, 9.30, which means I need to start by nine. Kunatari, 80 meters away. Flying on a southeasterly coast uh, course down the uh, western coast of the of South America, following the Andes Mountains. Good reports so far of that second burn completing. All right, y'all, keep the politics down. I, I really, really try to avoid politics because it, it can just spiral quickly. Um, Yeah, wow. See, now you can definitely tell it's not near. You're welcome.
So, um... Station Houston on Space to Ground 2 for HTV. IDM 2 maneuver complete. Verify per step 5 and 1 decimal 602. The 24-hour safe trajectory has been confirmed. We copy all. We are monitoring step 5 and have already verified all conditions. Copy that. The mail was delivered. Good reports from Capcom Alex Canalakos here in Mission Control Houston. That second burn has been completed. That was a 12 uh, second burn. That'll give it a, a little bit extra boost, a little extra speed to get outside the keep out sphere. You can see uh, about 109 meters away from the International Space Station at this point. Oof, all right. To an excited puppy, thank you, and you've got mail. Kind of sounds the same. Or f Oh, from a 114 puppy. meters away. You can see that rate uh, increasing just a little bit, a little bit more than 0.2 meters per second, heading towards that keep-out sphere. We have an Ask NASA question about the keep-out sphere. What is the zone, and how big is it? The flight controllers here have uh, telemetry that uh, sort of draws a 200-meter sort of elliptical sphere around uh, the International Space Station. That's about the range where the uh, where Jessica Meir and uh, Christina Cook inside the Cupola workstation have the uh, ability to send an abort command from their workstation inside the International Space Station. For HTV, abort type set to passive, verify per step six and one decimal six zero two. I'll be monitoring step six. And we see passive. Copy. And you can see they're already getting through those milestones for that uh, abort command as the HTV continues to move successfully through its timeline. Um, about 2 point, or 0 0.26 meters away. Um, that's the rate that it's uh, moving away from the space station, now 135 meters. But that keep out sphere is just a... Uh, has the ability for those two astronauts to send a command if they see anything wrong. They have the best vantage point of uh, the HTV from their workstation aboard the International Space Station. They're inside the cupola. It's a seven-bay window that looks right down towards the Earth. They're getting great views of the HTV and the Andes Mountains below them as the International Space Station and Kunatari 8 fly 259 statue miles uh, right over the west coast of Chile over the Andes Mountains. Okay, um, things and stuff. So, yeah, there is a launch tomorrow morning. Um, we're also going to be streaming the Bennu Celebration stream, which I am looking at right now. But the launch is kind of early for me, so um, I really don't know. If I'll cover it, um, I will need caffeine. So, um, and I'm not sure if Karina is going to join us, unfortunately. Ooh, saw uh, which they demonstrated is type of vacuum pump to suck up material on an asteroid. Yeah, go ahead, and you can post the link on here. Limp Rumble says, things and take space so long. Can you imagine if it took this long to pick up your garbage cans in the morning? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That would take a while. It is just a Cygnus, hee 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 hee. Just a few meters away from the keep-out sphere at this point, HTV tracking uh, 178 meters away. Again, that's about 200 meters to get outside the keep-out sphere. We have a question from Vance who's asking what happens once it's deorbited. Will the whole thing completely burn up upon re-entry? Yes, it will. Uh, there's uh, that HTV loaded with trash and uh, old nickel-hydrogen batteries. It'll make its flight uh, 
around the Earth for a little longer and start a series of three deorbit burns uh, on starting on Saturday afternoon U.S. time, carrying it through very late uh, Saturday night U.S. time. That'll take it into the uh, next day, uh, Sunday, J Japan time. Uh, those three maneuvers will take the whole thing uh, to deorbit into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It took five days from launch uh, until it... A great flight of HTV so far, just a few meters away from the keep-out sphere. Station Houston for HTV. <laughs> go ahead. Yes, you guys have a go in step... Seven of procedure one decimal four two zero, and we are complete in procedure one decimal six zero two. Okay, copy. Go for step seven in one dot four two zero. Say things coming on. Copy. Things in place. So that was a good read from Alex Kanellakos up to the two NASA astronauts in the cupola monitoring HTV's departure. It, it has crossed the keep-out sphere. The next step is a very long burn to take it uh, from the keep-out sphere out to the approach ellipsoid. That's about a kilometer away. This burn will be a long one, about 70 seconds. And will uh, increase the speed of uh, HTV's departure from where it currently is at points uh, just a little more than 0.4 meters per second to a little more than 1.2 meters per second. So it took from launch um, until it rendezvoused and was birthed with the ISS five days for HTV-8 to, to make that trip. It's not taking five days for this to be released from the ISS and essentially kind of disintegrate into the atmosphere with any possibly remaining debris falling into the Pacific Ocean. Um, which is, it's kind of, I'm kind of amused that it takes longer to get up. Station Houston for HTV. HTV has exited the 200 meter keep out sphere. All right, it's out of the keep out sphere. And we wanted to send our congratulations to JAXA and all the teams today on a great and successful mission. It was our honor to have Conditori on board. And we thank you guys for all your hard work uh, with the entire HTV-8 mission. And uh, for HTV-8, Kicho na Kamatsu to Kagaku no Tiekyo ni Kansha Shimashu Godosupidu no Utikushi Fune. Alex. They were speaking Japanese and it was adorable. I understand nothing of it, but I can I can relate to the stumbling over the thing. So I'm going to um, cut it here because they're just going to keep tracking it. But this was a uh, it was kind of neat to watch it uh, be separated like that. Just let me figure out. I have too many scenes. I have way too many scenes. So yeah, I'm just going to stop uh, that there because it's it's going to be a long and slow process and it's not nearly as exciting as a rocket launch and that's okay. Not everything in space is um, a rocket launch. And yes, as Star Destroyer says, come back in one hour for Astronomy Cast. I am going to be your uh, Twitch host. For astronomy cast I probably I don't know if I'll be on screen or not but I am hosting the simulcast uh, tonight and uh, Limp Rimble says I wish my family would get excited and congratulate me every time I took out the trash I don't know I don't know um, anyways the donation ticker is up you can donate at um, Streamlabs.com slash CosmoQuestX. That will immediately put it to that donation ticker. I don't know what else counts towards that donation ticker. That is not a question for me. That is a question for Star Strider. So, yeah. Things and stuff. 
Um, this current donation ticker is literally to pay for our servers and so on and so forth in the coming year. Oh, it is just Streamlabs. Okay, so it's just Streamlabs that's being synced with this. We're not manually syncing anything else. Um, these are, this is the costs. Okay, so this is how it works. Bits pay humans and Streamlabs donation ticker is to pay for the servers. These are the same servers that host the website, they host moon mappers, it hosts Bennu mappers, which is in phase two. Um, it hosts the forums, which I know not all of you use, and all sorts of other things that go on behind the scenes. So if you hated or loved Bennu mappers, <laughs> all right, and bits, if you hated and or loved ben Bennu mappers, um, please donate. If you hated and or if you enjoy mapping the moon, you know, please donate to keep the servers going. This is literally to keep the lights on. We don't like asking, but we'd like to keep the lights on. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Um, anyways, this has been a production of PSI. That's Planetary Science Institute located in Tucson, Arizona. PSI is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Which is fancy speak for your taxes? No. Your donations are tax deductible where the laws allow. Um, other ways to support us? Okay, this is kind of cool. So watch that go. Other ways to support us? Um, we have Patreon. We sell merch on Redbubble. We, um, um, I, I lost track. Bits, subs, all of that. Everything kind of goes into different pots, and that's fine. Um, which donation pays for the dog treats? Asked Limp Brimble. Uh, bits. Bits pay for dog treats. I use Cheerios. I'm not sure what Dr. Pamela uses right now, but bits pay for dog treats. Because bits pays for my paycheck. Um, yeah, things and stuff. What am I forgetting, dogs? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um... And Starshare says, bits pay humans, which buy dog treats. Yes, yes, bits pay for dog treats. Um, what else am I forgetting, doggos? Doggos are like, I don't know. I don't know what you're forgetting. Um, anyways, yeah, we need the servers to do work. We, we need the servers. We need servers like most of you need internet or toilets do it for the space toilets and champagne jelly beans. Blinkster says, ah, I missed the release. Yeah, the release was about a half hour ago. Um, so now it's just kind of in its trajectory to disintegrate in the atmosphere. Um, okay, I think more bits! More bits! Thank you for the bits, Ed! And make it rain! Alright, anyways... I'm gonna go. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you all in about an hour. Uh, you can watch here and we'll relay your questions to YouTube. You can watch on YouTube. It, it doesn't matter, but we'll see you in an hour. So until then, have a wonderful insert time of day here and yeah, keep being awesome. I'm going to awkwardly roll the credits as we do because somebody's got to do it. And yeah, things and stuff. Okay. I think I think I got it all. Maybe. This is hard, y'all. This is hard. All right, I got it. All right, that was not your phone. See you in a bit. Bye.